Mike Siegel and Efren Reyes are regarded as possibly the two best players in the world today. And not only that, Mike Siegel has been away from the game for the, for the best part of six to seven years. But he has played a couple matches in the tournament. His first match, he showed a little ring rust. But uh, fortunately for Mike, he came back in his second match and he really played superbly against the person next to me, Nick Warner. Uh, yeah, he really played uh, st uh, strong uh, the second match. I can testify firsthand to that, unfortunately. And uh, this is a match that the IQ stat viewers have uh, never had a chance to see before. Uh, Ephraim Ray's Mike Siegel playing straight pool. This is a new one. It certainly is. And there was, there was a possibility uh, just only 10 to 15 minutes before this match began that we weren't going to be able to do this match. But fortunately for us, you know, a couple of things came together and uh, we put it together and here it is right now. And I'm sure I'm sure it's to the delight of not only you and me, but all the people out there that are watching this tape right now. So well, I'm excited, Billy. Uh, I've never seen uh, uh, Ephraim play much straight pool and uh, uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I've saw Mike play uh, many, many games, uh, so I'm familiar with his game. And then straight pool, particularly when you're talking about the upper echelon player, you really have to jump out of the gate quickly because the player that jumps out of the gate quickly really has a big advantage playing straight pool. Well, that you put the pressure on your opponent. Sometime uh, the first guy that's able to put a lot of uh, points on the board. Sometime the balls uh, uh, don't roll so good for the guy that comes up next. You get that momentum on your side. It's huge in straight pool. Putting that pressure on your opponent, uh, you got to keep it on him in the straight pool. Well, that seems to slow him down as far as being able to answer with big runs. That's for sure. Immediately, Siegel's looking over the rack, and it looks like there's a possibility he can make that four-ball combination, the one ball in the corner pocket. A lot of strange things may happen considering the position of the 12 is laying against the 10, so therefore that shot may not be on, Nick. Well, I don't think the 12 won't go down and hit uh, much of the 9. I don't, I don't think that uh, the 13, 12, 9 will... You're talking about hitting the 13, 2, 10, 6, 9, 1. Right. He's I don't taking, think that works. But. He's taking another look at it now. You see how he's shooting the 12 into the 10? Just to see how much of that 9 he'll be able to hit with that 12. So if he can hit enough of the 9 with the 12, he's got a good shot of pocketing the 1. It looks like for me, from my vantage point, that's a pretty risky shot, Nick. He may even hit the 12 first and not the 13 to, to, give, to uh, force the 12 possibly through the 10 somewhat. Yeah, from here, I don't think it goes, but uh, I just don't. I think that the key here is uh, something needs to hit the nine in the middle. I think uh, he's calling the three ball, and uh, this is a tough opening shot in straight pool. This is, very, this is a huge shot here in the match. Well, to me, this is a very curious selection. This is the first shot of a very important match into a select a shot with the, with the degree of difficulty as this shot. <laughs> it's got to have a lot of heart. Three ball. Well, I know he's ready to play this match. He said that uh, he was really excited about playing this one because he's never played Ephraim in straight pool and he's played him in nine ball many, many times. Many times. Seagull. Possessed with such great pocket ability, pocketing skills, I should say. Well, you just can't pull the trigger. Couldn't pull the trigger. And, he, and, it was, and it's good that he got up from the shot because if you have anything negative going through your mind, you really have to get up from the shot. Yeah, if it don't look good, if you don't feel like you're going to make it, you're definitely right, Billy. <laughs> Oh, he hit it very poorly. Reyes jumping out of his chair now, making his appearance at the table. Certainly has a better situation to deal with than Siegel did. One point from Mr. Siegel, post one foul. Okay, uh, uh, that was a tough opening shot, and uh, Mike couldn't get it down. And uh, now Ephraim, uh, this is the way you definitely want your first uh, shooting inning at the tables. Uh, the score is zero to minus one, and he's got a chance to uh, put the pressure on Mike now. 12 ball. He's starting with a 12. He wouldn't have started with the 12 had the 9 not been in the position it's in. One. But of course, why not eliminate the 12? It was in like a like a problem area on the table, so therefore we took advantage of the situation and it opened up with Three the 12. Ball. Yeah, that's astute on your part, Billy, because uh, 
you know, all those balls on that end, usually they're not much of an, a disadvantage, uh, not much of an advantage uh, to have any up there. It's basically you want to keep the straight pool. You want to keep it on this half of the table. Notice uh, there is a break ball in the 10 ball, a lot of congestion on the other side of the table. And uh, how would you go about handling this situation, Nick? Well, he's got him. He's got to try to get, I think, that eight ball out, and he's got that four ball cluster. In fact, Three. let me uh, put it on the telestrator that he has to deal with here. Uh, uh, this four ball cluster right here. He, that's what he's got to get apart. And uh, he uh, opens up the pocket here with the eight. He's coming around, and then uh, the seven goes. See. So uh, he could use the seven to spread out uh, those other three balls. I don't know if he got far enough to play. Yes, he did. So, see, he's getting to the trouble real early, which is uh, shows you that uh, he's thinking pretty good at this point in the match. You know, he went right after the problem. He didn't waste much time getting to that, did he, Billy? I know he didn't. And another reason why he perhaps chose to uh, to get to that problem as quickly as he did is because of the position of the nine. It was a good insurance ball to get him out of trouble after breaking breaking up that cluster. Yeah, it's always nice to have one uh, hung up in the pockets and uh, look like the... Uh, Seven. So he wants to go over and play that 14 or 15 in the same pocket. No, he's going to play the combo. He's just going to play the combo. And now everything's apart, Billy, and uh, he's got a great uh, break shot with the... 10 and uh, he's got uh, a pretty good ball the key ball with the two he's got other choices but uh, what do you like here well i think that he can use just about any ball for a lead ball to the break ball it's because of the position of the break ball so closely positioned to the rack if it was positioned further away from the rack then the two ball would be more ideal for a lead up ball for the break ball right he does have to draw back uh, past the center of the table a little bit exactly and, uh, it's not a stop and it's not a shoot and stop proposition with the lead ball if you use the two yeah, I definitely like that stop on the last one. <laughs> I've played enough of this game to know that much. It certainly is. You like that Cosmo. I like stop, stop, stop on those last three. That's, uh, well, it looks like he's, uh, he might play the two or he can play the 13 and uh, may have to play the 13 and the six both in the same pocket and looks like he may end up uh, saving that to two unless he draws back for it here. No, he's, uh, one thing you'll notice these players, these great players when they play straight pool, they don't like to move that cue ball any further than necessary on any shot. That's true. <laughs> and it, it really it really helps to get a good angle on the ball you're, you're playing position for. You know, off the ball, you're playing position for. Yeah, no, he's got to go all the way down to the end rail. He's, uh, he may even spend two rails to get that angle on the 10 because it's laying pretty natural 14. where you can fall on that uh, angle, and that's, on run, that's 14, ideal. The Certainly is. The if the uh, break ball, the 10 ball, was positioned further to the right, then he would have more of a problem attaining a nice angle with the route that he chose. So, therefore, he would have probably went straight down table and then back up. Yeah, you're right. If that 10 ball was over another six inches to the right, you're right. He would have just went one rail straight up and down. Makes a big difference. Well, Siegel uh, opting to shoot a very difficult shot in the first rack, obviously missing the shot. And as it make matters worse, he scratched, giving Reyes ball in hand. Reyes running the first 14 balls of the match, leads in the match 14 to minus one. Yeah, that'll come up, too, if Ephraim ever breaks the balls and gets stuck in the middle of something where uh, he'll use that foul that uh, Siegel's on. But uh, who knows? Uh, we don't know how this inning's going to end right here. He's opened up the balls with the 10 real good, Billy. Uh, and I uh, can't see what he's shooting here. Is he playing a combination on the 12-1? That's a pretty tough shot to get after the break. Well, unfortunately, that's all he had was that combination. Now, you know, Considering that Siegel was on a foul, considering Siegel was on a foul, he did have a choice there. His other choice was possibly to shoot the cue ball back up table, leaving the combination only available, and that's all for Siegel, which would have been an extremely low percentage shot. Well, you know what's kind of amazing here, Billy? I didn't, <coughs> I thought he was shooting something in between there because he kind of acted like nonchalant on that. On right. that shot, no and to me, that didn't look like a routine situation there in <laughs> yeah. straight pool. Def definitely demanded a little of respect, enough for you to think about it for a little while. 
you know, and what you're saying is, is that there really wasn't any indecision on his part at all. He just went out there and shut it like it was a hanger. Yeah, like the one wasn't in the way, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like he was shooting the 12 straight in. It's a little surprising. Uh, but he's left Siegel where Siegel had to come with a pretty good shot on the one. He didn't leave Siegel a hanger either, but uh, Mike's got the one ball down, and now he's off the foul. So that won't come up into play. This is exactly what he needed to relax himself in the early goings here after obviously choosing a very difficult shot and hitting it as poorly as he did. Something oh. like this was just like, if you could, you could call this like room service. Well, he could have, uh, Ephraim could have dug a deep hole from him right off the reel there. And uh, Mike sure. finds himself back at the table down 14 to zero, which uh, I know his attitude on it is, that's a joke, 14 balls. <laughs> And if you notice that how Reyes struck that combination, he really didn't hit it as well as he expected, or we expected him to hit it. He missed it by his, you know, a, a pretty large margin. Well, Mike, Mike's got a good ball there. He's left-handed, so it's a little bit on the wrong side of the table for him. The two, two's positioned pretty good, and uh, <clears throat> he's got a cluster right in the center that he has to deal with. He's got the 15, 11, 6, 3, and... Uh, Yeah, he's going to have to probably... Evidently, uh, he can't make the 11, because uh, I would take the 11 now and push the four, 15 over and play the 4 next. Yeah, and when you push the 15 over Five. and then play the 4, it opens up the pocket, uh, that right-hand corner for the 3 and the 6. Right. Four ball. Well, that's a very intelligent way of remedying the situation, but evidently he didn't see it that way. Six. Or else maybe the 11, he couldn't make it, maybe. I don't know. It looks like it goes, but uh, he elected to here. He can, uh, he's got a lot of choices here. He can uh, draw and play the three in the side or go down for the eight or maybe even. Uh, no, he played the 11. Seven. Huh, that's interesting. Well, he, he can go back up now for the 15 ball, but it looks like the way, the way he's cueing it, he's not going back in between the 2 and the 15. I'm surprised he didn't play the 15 because that opened up both balls. Now he's going back in between the 2 and the 15 for position 4 of the 15. After he shoots this ball, the key ball, then will be the 7, and that'll lead him to the 6 and the 3. Uh, let, me ha let me ask you this, that 14 ball down at the other end of the table, it seems to me that it's going to be a problem for him a little bit because he would like to go from the 7 to the 6 to the 3 opposed to the 14 to the 6 to the 3. So therefore, he's going to have to play 15-7 here, Nick. Well, I think he's going to play... Well, he's already done it, but I was thinking he's going to play 14, but he's a little flat on this uh, to go two rails. Uh, uh, He's got to go two rails on this 14. I think he'd be like to have been a little thinner. Yeah, He's got yeah. a pound that's pretty mm -hmm. good, and he needs to get there, too. Uh, this ain't like uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> this exactly. is a crucial position shot. He, he did, I'm not sure he got there. Can he stun that and stop for those? I don't he think may so. have to go into these balls, and that's a no-no. That's why I thought that he should have played for the 7, because he was going to he was going attain, attain the right angle on the 7 off of the 15 more often. I don't think he's going to like this as well. I don't think the three cleared the six, and he can't be happy with this. Uh, well, one thing about what you said about moving that seven, Billy, is the fact that uh, the only thing is, though, when he moves the seven, he can't hardly get down on this half of the table for that three six. I mean, he opens up the three six, but he has a hard time getting above a side pocket straight in because the side pocket's right where right. straight in is. And that's why I said the 14 could be a problem, and it was a problem leading to the seven. Two ball. Now he's opting to go ahead and take away the break ball and uh, see what he can manufacture. If, if he can manufacture something, he will. Twelve. I no, he didn't get there. I know what he's, he almost got there. He, he may be able to, but he has to cut it in the side. So he wanted to push the three over to the right. Yeah. Uh, but he, I think he's falling straight in the on the ball six. This area here where he's he going to have to play it. this in the side to, to stick in the rack and move the three ball out. Right. But he actually wanted the cue ball here where he could pocket the six, knock the three over here. Cue ball would have then stayed in the stack. I guess that's what he really wanted to do. He didn't. He didn't really gain that that angle to, 
to be able to do that. Now he's, he's gonna have to try. position on the ball on the upper spot, and look at that cue ball jump straight up in the air there. Wow. And that's why he didn't get the movement. He was trying movement. to follow like three more feet forward. Did you see it hit that six? It jumped straight up in the air. And when a ball skits like that, it loses rotation, and that's why he didn't go up table another foot or so where he wanted to end up. Now he's ended up uh, on this side of the side pocket. He's going to have to the referee. Rolando Aravina will have to spot the three ball on the head spot. Siegel will then be shooting over the rack. Very difficult shot. And really, he's lo he lost his market on any type of a break possibility at all. Yeah, on this shot, being left hand is not an advantage uh, from this angle <laughs> over the rack. You know, I think it goes back to that series. You remember that 15 ball? I thought he was going to shoot and stuff. I. He had to take, waste another shot coming off the rail to come up to open that pocket up. Uh, I think uh, that whole rack, how it ended up, uh, goes back to that situation right there. It very easily could have. You know, he could have remedied everything if he would have chosen uh, another route. One thing about this straight pool, boy, when you pick the wrong ball, I've done it a million times myself, but man, sometime that trouble ball, it comes into play big time that you just don't ever recover from it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, it comes into into play more often than you would like it. If this it, is hard, even if you pocket the three to catch the stack here. Uh, look at this bridge. Uh, yeah. Look how elevated his cue is. Uh, Looks boy, like he, that's a hard shot to pocket, and uh, I guess he's going after the rack. But yeah, he figured to come short like he did. Looks like he's going to scratch in the corner no. pocket. Maybe not so. And he came out pretty good, really. Uh, he came out pretty good, but uh, his score is 12. Well, well, both players off to a little bit of a shaky start here, Billy. Well, that's understandable in a sense because uh, this is a very, very early stage of the match, and usually it takes a, you know a few racks for both players to get comfortable. And don't forget, there's a lot of pressures out there on both of these players considering who they're playing and how badly the they want to win. He can see the edge of the three here. He's banking the three. How about this for a uh, aggressive shot, Billy? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Is that aggressive well, enough for you? Okay. Uh, <laughs> take my watch. That looks like a shot you might try, Billy. <laughs> you know me well. In another <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> uh, but in one pocket, I wouldn't bet against you trying something that aggressive now. You're okay. always trying to figure out a way to get a ball in your hole in that game. Well, I'll tell you what, I really didn't expect anything like that to happen. And after he made that shot, oh, I thought he missed the uh, the cut on the 12. What a great shot that was. And to play it playing straight pool and to, and to play it against Mike Siegel playing straight pool, you really either have to, have to have a total disregard for your opponent or you have to be, I don't know, not thinking clearly. Well, that's a little bit like... Uh uh, hell, hell game, and uh, you play kind of a tough combination instead of running out. You know what I mean? <laughs> how about if he ran? Look like how these balls came up far. Wow! Right. How about if he like ran 140 and out off of that shot? Hmm. I tell you what, he's got him laying like a dream here. That last break shot opens him up like butter. And for uh, you straight pool enthusiasts out there, I don't. I wouldn't advise. You know shooting a shot like Five. that unless you banked as well as Reyes <laughs> 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 or Nick you happen Boy. to be the world champion bank pool player Nick uh, do you think that shot would have been on the menu you know I love that cross bank <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure I might play it in any game but I'm not <laughs> sure that I would have played that one in this game Beautiful. especially if I was playing Mike Sato <laughs> And, I, and I'm pretty aggressive. In fact, I forgot to play safe a couple of times in this tournament when I should have. <laughs> 11 ball. Well, it looks like the four ball's probably in the best, best position in relation to the rack. He's got four choices there, though. He could use any one of the four. Well, the seven ball isn't positioned all that badly. No. No, it's hitting up high where if you catch that front ball solid, they'll open up nice. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what Ephraim prefers here. Nine ball. Nine. Nine. 
15 ball. Ten. Yeah, I think he's going over on that opposite side. <clears throat> I like the four ball best over there, Billy. Yeah, he's uh, he obviously he does. He likes the four ball, but he's got to get rid of that five ball. The five ball is not really what you consider an ideal lead ball, so therefore, why even keep it there? I would. Uh, In fact, if, but the five looks too low. But the five's the easiest one to set up on. Those low balls are, I do not ever try to leave one of them. <laughs> no, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't saying that the five ball would be a possible five break ball. ball. I'm saying that the five ball is a ball that he should get, a, get, or get off the table a little quicker because it's, it's a, it was in a bad position on the table. You don't really need that ball there. Tell you what, he's going to have to play underneath the 14 right here. Uh, no, he did go up high. Wow. He's going back and forth here. At least I don't think he can kill this. No, he can't kill this. But that's boy, for sure. You've got to have great speed for this shot. Fourteen. Tell you what, he got a good breaking angle. A little unorthodox, but nevertheless, he's still got the job done. Mr. Ray is twenty-nine. Mr. Siegel. Yeah, I would have. Uh, yeah, he definitely uh, threw me there when he went around two rails and then have to go back and forth. I would have, uh, I would have stopped underneath the uh, last ball. Right, he played it up the other corner, but he didn't throw you nearly as much as when he banked the three cross side. No, that <laughs> might be the biggest the surprise there I've seen in the entire tournament. Quite some time, but uh, you know, that's uh, yeah. that's what makes this game so entertaining and particularly when you're watching players like Efren Reyes I should say uh, Efren Reyes himself or aren't many really players like him 15 5 ball Reyes did uh, Enter one other straight pool tournament that I know of, and it was in Portland, Maine, in 19, I believe it was 95 or 96, and he went on to win that event. When he first started to play in that tournament, Nick, which you weren't there, when he first started to play in that tournament, he really knew very little about straight pool, and and as the matches progressed, you could see how quickly he began to understand how to do things the right way. It didn't take him long. He's really a fast learner. Mm, he 14. sure is. Uh, he, 14 ball. Any, <laughs> any game on the pool table uh, <coughs> with balls, he seems to adjust pretty quick, Billy. 18. Actually, he was, uh, he was learning so quick that, he, that you, you, you saw the difference in his play in, in, in the same game didn't take him long at all and by the near the end of the tournament uh, he ended up with the high run of the tournament I believe it was like 130 or believe it was and I think Miserac had the high run until the last day and then that Reyes broke it 19. the equipment in Portland was a little different than what we have here the pockets were a little bit smaller there oh they were smaller in Portland yeah three ball didn't take Ray as long to learn one pocket as well. I tell you what, on these, these tables, uh, you might not get three shots to get uh, 150 on these, this equipment. <clears throat> when you get to that table, you've got to make it count. Ray is, uh, at least by his demeanor, seems much more comfortable now when he's at the table. Now at the table than he than he was the first the first trip. Yeah, I have to agree. Uh, he looks like a little different person. Uh, he looks a little more relaxed. Now he tried to move the nine in the uh, break ball position. It looks like it's gotten a little table a little too high there, Nick. Yeah, it's a little high. It's a possibility, but he he's looking to see. I'm sure if he can get something a little closer to the rack, down a little lower. 
And what was so beautiful the last time I watched Reyes play straight pool was his uncanny ability to manufacture break balls because of his, naturally, his skills of uh, controlling the cue ball and hitting balls in, in difficult positions. 23. You think he was trying to bump the 15 there? I don't know what he was trying to do, but he may try to move the two over for a break, but if he does that, you know, he may not end up with a shot. <clears throat> well, if he hits a six first and then pushes a two over, he will get one. Yeah, he was trying to make one there, Billy. But he hasn't quite got one quite where he'd like it yet, so now he has to start making a decision on which one. <laughs> now, the nine's too low, and the, excuse me, the nine's too high, and the two is too low. But I think either ball is kind of workable. Six ball. I would go for the nine, what I like here. Doesn't mean what he's going to do, but I like the first shot. Then I like getting the two and 15 off the table and ending up close to where the 15's at and going two rails and getting that angle on the nine where I can, uh, that's easy to get the right angle on the nine is what I'm saying. But, uh, well, I don't know what he's going to do here now. He's out of line on this 15. He's got to almost bump the 11. Well, he was going to use the 11 for the break ball. Oh, okay. He was going up for the nine and just didn't get there. Is that what you mean? Right. He was going up for the nine, using the 15 as the lead See, ball. See, right there is a good spot to be on this break shot. Maybe a little closer, but nine but uh, the, you would get a good spread from him. He's, he's going with the, he's elected. He likes the one behind the rack. Uh. Well, once again, he's showed us how, you know, beautifully he controls the cue ball. That's really ideal if you're going to use the 11. Yeah. And yeah, because he got a little bit out of line on that nine ball, and he made a good job pocketing it. Right. From the position he ended, ended up in on the nine, to come up with a shot like this on the 11, you really have to, you know, he really have to control that cue ball extremely well, and that's exactly what he's done. So it looks like he's gotten himself a pretty good break ball in the, uh, in the 11 right here. Yeah, I preferred the nine there, but uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, he's got a good angle on this 11. If he gets a shot after the break, it uh, all matters if you get a shot after you break him. You know, that's the key. Well, what are you going to do? I've seen him uh, shoot this break shot many times in the past. He's going to hit this with a lot of velocity, you know, and in doing that, bad things can happen. But uh, he's going to hit it pretty hard. Well, the most important thing is he's got to pocket the 11, number one, and number two, he's got to hit uh, around that left side of that five as we look at. Well, he hit more toward the center, and he came out okay, but uh, I like hitting more of the f left center of the five there. Gives you a better chance of getting away from the racket up table. Yeah, he kind of split the ten and the five, I think, and he was a he hit the ten first, so he went to the left, but uh, hitting that ten can be kind of dangerous. Mm, but in spite of that, the result's pretty good. Yeah, he's got a good shot on the seven, and he got a lot of balls out. And now <clears throat> he might elect to... Uh, well, he may have to now, but uh, he'll probably go to the top of those uh, five-ball cluster right in the heart of the rack and go ahead and get the rest of them apart here, Billy. Yeah, he has a lot of protection from again, from scratching. Now he's got a problem, Nick, unless the one goes in the side. Twelve goes in the side, and maybe the one, two. He's got two shots. I mean, you got to stay down with him, but... Uh, I thought he was in trouble for a minute. Uh, if it doesn't go by the nine, he might have a big problem. I tell you what, on this table, that one two ain't laying all that. I mean, it's you'd rather be shooting one of those straight in, but the one two is a possibility. Well, well, we the know, one may go on the side. We know he's going to shoot something. Yeah, the one in the side. Thirty-two. Very nicely executed shot, considering the uh, situation he was in. He wants to get the three out of there, but this is not going to be the shot. I don't think he can do it. No, too much of an angle. He's going to have to deal with probably the four. If he opts to shoot the three, and uh, who knows what will happen if he hits the four coming back. The 14. I think he's going to hit the 14, and uh, I can't tell. No, he's going to go ahead with the three. Well, this is a good one to get out of there if he can draw up uh, above a four. Well, that's pretty good because now he can open the balls up by, by shooting the four. Well, he's opting to shoot the two here. Well, I might play the two in the side here or the 14, either one. But that 14's a little thinner than I like. I might even shoot the 13 here. 
and get straight in on the two. I think that's what I like because at 13, there's no advantage of it sitting there, you know? No. There's no advantage of leaving it. And see, he broke out one. Now he's got to swing around the stack. Now take a look at the position of the nine. Now that's a possible break ball. The nine, if the 14 passes the nine, he can attain a shot on the 14, which will put him on the 12, and maybe he can open up the 510 in that fashion and still save the nine for a break ball. I know it's sitting a little lower than you would like, but is there anything that wrong with a low break ball like the nine? No, the nine's okay. The only problem is I don't think the 14 clears, and he's got to be a little careful. I think the only ball he can play position on, unless it's something upstairs, is a four and four and uh, these two purple balls here to get. Or is that the 14? Oh, see what he did. See, he wasn't in a real comfortable position there. Yeah, I didn't expect him to use a, a low ball on that particular on that particular shot, but he certainly surprised me. Does the 13 pass to four? I can't tell uh, on this telestrator. It halfway looks like it may be blocked. Uh, but to 14, uh, he's got to get to, he's still got these three balls here that he needs to get apart. And uh, I don't think, I think the 10 passes now. Oh, I think it? he can make the 10 now. So he, okay. he, he uh, disturbed that little layout when he drew the cue ball back. Two shots. He's going to shoot the 10 here. Okay, now he he does have a break ball in the four, I believe. It's a little higher than the 15, so therefore it looks like to me at least it's a better break ball. And the, and the 13 must obviously pass. Yeah, well, <clears throat> it's easy to set up on if he can uh, if he can get a good angle on the 14. I'd play the 13 in the upper corner myself and just stop there where the 14's at. But he's uh, going to go ahead and remove it. Looks like Evidently, it passes, Billy, mm -hmm. or I don't think he would have, uh, I don't think he'd be shooting this way if it uh, would. So he, evidently, the 13 passes, and uh, he's going to take that four as a break shot, or. 41. Tell you yeah. what, this is ideal here. Mm -hmm. He's going to get a nice angle on that four from this position here. Yeah, that's where he wanted to be. 13 ball. And that's exactly where he wanted to be on the break ball. That's my favorite break shot. <laughs> Might be a hair low on the four, but, uh, but uh, missing the four don't come into play much on this one, Billy. And he can hit it with some speed, too, because he's so close to the four. Accuracy's not going to be much of a problem. And if you hit this with a high ball and try to go through the stack. Yeah, I'm going to use high hollow. Yeah. Yeah. Just not hit it hard enough that you jump. You got to be careful on one like this. Uh, you could uh, jump the cue ball if you're hitting around that corner ball. You could even jump off a table if you overamp too much. He might have to. I tell you what, he's hitting a little lower than what I thought after they rack up the balls. So he may even have to draw into the two here, Billy, or center ball. Yeah, you know, he's don't. He might not have the luxury of high here. Oh. And how That's often, always the danger on that darn shot. When you're hitting that corner ball, you go to the end rail. A lot of times, Billy, you get that double kiss at the end rail where it goes in this other pocket, the right pocket. But that low break shot, you, I mean, uh, a lot of people think uh, they're a little hard luck when that happens. But, uh, boy, it happens a lot. That was the question I was about to ask you, Nick. How often does that happen? And does it happen often enough to try to protect yourself from that happening by hitting it with a little less speed? Less speed and maybe a little more low. So you hit that corner ball a little higher, a little mm -hmm. fuller. You know, those are the two things you could do to try to keep that from happening. They're not as, uh, you won't get as many spread out. I mean, he got a nice spread here, but uh, at the same time, it kind of uh, helps protect finding that cue ball in the bottom of the drink. And that's the type of a break shot you really don't know, you know, that that scratch is available as, 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 as often as it is unless you play a lot of straight pool. You're right. You have to play it a lot. I've had that. <laughs> 
and believe me, I've had a taste of that one so many times. I know that is more than routine there. <laughs> maybe the first few, maybe the first 20 times I scratched on it, I might have thought this is hard luck, but I don't think it's hard luck no more. So, so probably, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So probably Reyes is probably thinking, man, that, how did that happen, you know? And here you are saying, it's there. <laughs> I tell you what, I've played a lot of straight pool in my life, and I tell you what, I got a scratch in this tournament I never got before. It was amazing. I didn't think that I, I thought I'd had them all, but I got a new one in this one. <laughs> well, Captain Hook's got to be pretty happy to, because uh, uh, Ephraim was looking pretty smooth yeah. there, like a hundred plus yeah, he was, was coming. He was definitely looking smooth, you know. I mean, he opened up that run with that bank on a three cross side. Uh. Nine ball. Seven. Well, he's got uh, Mr. Siegel's attention. Four. Now, what's going to be interesting to see, Billy, how Mike deals with that interior cluster of balls, you, except for those rare occasions when you get that break shot where they all open up in one. Usually, this is a normal rack of straight pool here, you know, where you've got to deal with the cluster in the center. Well, now, if you, if you take a look at the eight ball here, that ball might be available in this pocket. Now, if it is, he may play position for it now. No, nope, he's Six. definitely bypassed. The I think mark. he was trying to go there, but I think that uh, I think that uh, he went too far. Yeah. So he's a, he's just a little out of keel. He hasn't quite got that cue ball under the control that he wants to have it under. He's he's uh, and as you can tell, there's not many balls left to open these balls up. He's running out of time. He's definitely running out of opportunities. Every ball he pockets from here after, it's one less opportunity for him to open up that cluster. So therefore, he may have to try to be a little more creative or and possibly manufacture something to open up that cluster, and it's getting a little bit late. Now, this is really good here, what he did there. I love this, Billy. See, a lot of people try to sneak around the two and get the ten and they end off slightly awful angle or something but he went up where he had that two as the out ball and he happened to fall perfect on the six so he didn't even have to waste another right. ball that that was <laughs> that what a great shot that was that he did there it looked like he was could get in trouble there and then one shot by playing such great speed control and he had to two, where he could stop on the two stop on the ten and do the same thing again you know what i mean exactly what exactly, that yes. that was phenomenal that shot he played nine Okay, he's falling a little short of the mark once again, and notice that shaking of the head, it's so, been so routine with him, and when you watch him play, he keeps shaking his head, and then he runs like a hundred on you. Well, routine, uh, you don't want to pay any attention to him shaking his head, because he'll be shaking his head when he's getting ready to uh, shoot a duck in the side to knock you off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you want to knock his head off. <laughs> Say, how can he do this to me? You know, like he's in trouble. In the meantime, like I'm gasping for air. <laughs> well, he's going to stay down good with this 12 here because, boy, he's got uh, he's uh, got to get a good angle. Ooh, he was. I think the 14, the 15 is in the rack, isn't it? See, he was. He's got. A great break shot there, but uh, he's got to get that 15 out of the rack, and uh, he don't. Uh, this is a tough angle to do it on here. Uh, he don't have a real good break shot yet, Billy. See, no. he's looking there where he needs to be, and uh, he may have to go 10, 4, 13, and then push it out that way, Billy. Four in the side. <laughs> That's draw, not going to be easy. Or he may draw it back now, but I kind of like taking that one extra step here, but. No, I think he's coming back right now. Too far. Too yeah, far. it looks like he may have gone. No, it. May, no, no he can soft roll it, I think, and get there. A little bit low again, yeah. Billy. Once again, it's a little uh, low. A little low, so we're going to have an... Uh, when Mike draws back, uh, we're going to get a chance to see another low break shot. Oh, I like this. 14. I like the way he did that. Instead of uh, drawing back, I like that extra rail he took there, Billy. He, some people don't do that. They they draw straight back. I like the extra. I like hitting the. I like hitting the extra rail because you never end up short. Uh, never end up short on the shot. In other words, you get to get to the position where you need to be, hit the rail, and come back out. And all along that route, you're still in position. 
In other words, you're in position for a good six to eight inches longer there than you it would if, if you would have chosen the other route. Yeah, but the only thing that can go there is you really overamp because nothing. Right. You're not going to stick on the rail trying to bounce out. And but plus, the only thing that can happen there is if you're just hitting them so pure, you just. <laughs> But like you say, there's hardly anything go wrong now. See, he's looking this over now. He, he's looking. <laughs> and plus, he said it's yeah, low, exactly. right? Yeah, Billy? I want to say that the same thing happened to me that happened to this guy over here. <laughs> In the meantime, it's so he's much going to draw above the stack. I think. Oh, it was so low he couldn't hardly hit the rack. And going back to that uh, lead balls with the break shot, the execution of it. The execution of that shot, the way he executed it, it was easier control and feel the speed of the shot. And that's why he opted to go the, uh, the, the rail and back. And well, in the meantime, like he would... that shot. <laughs> now, here's where the one foul is going to come up, Billy. Uh, Mike, uh, you notice he's getting ready to uh, have him answer for that last scratch again right yes, here sir. on the safety exchange. But let's see if maybe Ephraim might try one of them Foul. two rail kicks that we've seen off the side of the stack. You think he'll go no. for something like that? No, I think he's too smart for that. I think he's going to go two cushions underneath the stack and try to knock out a ball. You know, uh, he, he understands that that's the correct shot from this from this position. When it's on the first foul here, so therefore he's got to he's got to create some sort of a you know a viable position for himself the next time he comes back to the table. He's uh, trying to thin the 12, Billy. Nobody's that good. Safety's allowed. <laughs> no one's that good. Safety Seagull allowed. Said, uh, nobody's that good. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and our Ravino said, safety allowed. Hard to believe there. <laughs> Siegel said it's hard to believe. <laughs> Uh, well, I know he don't want to believe that safety was allowed. <laughs> was, when he said it's hard to believe, is he paying respect to Efren Reyes, or is he telling us how hard luck he is? <laughs> no, I think he's paying respect to Efren Reyes there. Okay. At least that's safety. what his tone sounded like to me. <laughs> he would have been shaking his head with a more vicious look on his face, I think, if he thought he got lucky. Post two fouls. Or perhaps maybe that was his way of saying, how could he even try that shot? No, well, now that's a possibility. <laughs> now that is a possibility. So maybe it wasn't a race shot, huh? <laughs> maybe not. But at that time, it was for Reyes. At that time, it was the right shot, no question about it, because he was on a foul, and he had to figure out a way to get out of the jam, and he got out Safety. of it one shot earlier, and I figured he'd get out of it. So. <laughs> and he would, he, he got out of it one shot earlier than you would have got out of it, that's for sure. You're <laughs> not kidding. Siegel's looking at the, at the nine ball. Ray is scratching his head like, what did I do? But... Uh, Okay, now he's going to knock the nine up above the side probably and come back underneath Safety's the allowed. cushion. And he wants to get by that Remove 14. From Mr. Re uh, Mr. Siegel. And, and why he, does he want to get by that 14? Well, Ephraim can play the 14 to the left rail and draw him underneath the 8 and 11. And then he's got balls out on both sides of the table where he's trapped. So that's Billy. Uh, that's that's important Ooh. to there because if he stops in the center of the table there, not thinking about shooting at the nine, but then all he's got to do is knock a 14 the rail, draw him underneath. Now he's got the nine this side, the six safety. up there, and he's got the 14 over here. How you play safe safety against those three? Exactly, exactly. exactly. In case I didn't know that, Post now I know it. Thank you. Ray is taking uh, an intentional scratch. The only intelligent thing to do from the position that he was in. Safety. Safety. Well, in addition to running balls, I think this is a part of the game Mike excels at here. He, to me, is the hardest guy to beat to the shot in this type of situation and I think of anybody I've ever played. I think that's mainly attributable to his opportunity to play what's-his-name from Rochester, Mr. Crane, all those years. Certainly went to school playing Crane for all those years up there and learned a lot about the safety end of the game. Yeah, well, 
<laughs> yeah, you're right. Herb could teach anybody a few things. <laughs> Irving Crane could teach anything. A few of the finer points of this game. He uh, certainly could. Talk about a player. What did he do? He won a he won a world tournament in four or five different decades. I mean, yes, what a did. record he had. Won the world championship, I think, when he was like 63. I mean, what a player. And he happened to be in the same town and lived in the same town that Mike Siegel was born and raised in. So yeah, they've played they one give Mike another. a little bit of an edge. <laughs> yeah. Huh? <laughs> not fair, is it? No, that's see, not fair. See, if there. I was born in Rochester, I'd be out there now. <laughs> <laughs> Safety. Wow, now there's a shot I didn't say either. <laughs> Single <Bounce> says bouncer. <laughs> I mean, where is he coming with these shots from? I think uh, the 14. I think uh, that was a shot I didn't anticipate. Uh, but does this 14 go here? I don't know, but Reyes really does some creative stuff out there on the, when he's playing. I mean, uh, I've been watching straight pool now for a, a long time, and uh, I've seen a Reyes execute two shots and even select two shots that I've never seen. Anyone else ever select those two shots? For instance, the last one he just shot. He's going to play the 14 ball. I think the biggest danger here, you got to be sure that four don't catch it on the way of the hole. See that two, three, 13, 10, four? Uh, he's got to be sure it gets by that four before it starts moving down. I don't think he's going to hit much of the eight, though. See? Oh, you're right. The four, your four jumped out of there, Mr. Varner. Yeah, he's able to hit it full enough to get it by the four first, but that four was coming that way. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. That'll make your heart flutter a little, Billy. <laughs> yeah, it's those uh, unforeseen things like that that really scare you, you know. Oh, what, 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 what is this? Yeah, my heart fluttered, and I'm not even in a match. <laughs> Three. Tell you what, he's not quite moving that cue ball the way he wants. <laughs> no, he's not, but he does have such Three. strong recovery power and skills that. Uh, Four. He doesn't really need to move it as proficient as others, but. Uh, he really does, but maybe not at that, in, that, that instant he didn't. He's such a tremendous player in terms of not only pocketing balls, but manipulating the cue ball. And Five. usually using real good discretion when he's at the table. It's so important when you play straight pool, more so than mostly any other game. Yeah, yeah, you're right, because, uh, Six. One ball. you know, it wasn't that I played so bad in this tournament that I got beat, but I made a couple of real bad, I got Seven. eliminated quickly mostly because I made Five just a ball. couple of critical uh, judgment errors on shots at the wrong time. Uh, well, when you play straight eight. pool, there's many more judgment errors that you have to deal Seven with. Ball. Many more opposed to like playing nine ball. Nine ball, the balls speak speak for you a, a lot of the time. You got to do this. You got to come over here. This route is accessible. Choose to go this way. Straight pull. There's nine. hundreds and hundreds of options in every rack. Well, even when I was playing Micah match, uh, you know, I had two decisions. I could have done a little different. You know, I let that ball hang out where he made it and run out the rest of the game. I could have pushed Seven up ball. against a stack and took a foul, and years ago I probably would have, but I just didn't think that he'd come with that shot being Ten. not playing in tournaments for six years. You know, I thought he'd be a little rusty Four on that ball. kind of stuff. But boy, <laughs> so much for that thought. Mm -hmm. So you totally That's why I'm sitting here with you, Billy. <laughs> You're not happy? He made it. <laughs> I thought you liked me. Oh, I like you, Billy. <laughs> But you'd rather Eight be down there than conversing with me. Okay, I'm not uh, upset about it. I can deal with it. Yeah, nothing wrong with you. I <laughs> don't have any problems sitting there. Mm. 
Now that shot needed 13. needed uh, you know a so good Siegel speed on control 13. on that shot. <laughs> Siegel clapped. Well, I'll tell you what, he'd like to be an inch or two further right there. He, he, he got a little straighter than he wanted, so <coughs> he's going to have to slide off the stack, I think, here. I don't know if he can get to the top of it or not. Uh, Does anyone play to the crowd any better than Mike Siegel? That's what I want to know, really. You know you've been with him more than anyone else? Yeah, he's good. He's good. <laughs> Yes, he certainly is, and that's what we miss when Mike's not, uh, you know, playing in tournaments. We, that, that's a that's a lot of the stuff that we we miss. Well, it's really great to see him play again. Uh, uh, he's going with a high follow stroke here, Billy. Uh oh, uh oh, woo! I've scratched many times shooting that type of a break shot. Fourteen. Well, that's one. If you don't get that follow on it, if you slap it a little or punch it a little, you will find the hole. Uh, he came dangerously close there, and uh, yeah, if you don't get enough follow on that break shot, the kiss will negate the, uh, the, the top spin that you do have on it, and then it'll go toward the pocket. But as long as you have that good follow on it, the follow will then, you know, overcome that kiss and it'll continue going forward. Yeah, you hit that with a poor stroke, and you will find the pocket on that shot. Uh, That's probably the why I find the pocket as often as I do because of my inability to put a good stroke. On who, that shot. Who are you trying to kid, Billy? I'm not trying to kid anyone, Nick, but I expected you to say that. <laughs> Four ball. I don't remember your your cue ball disappearing too much when I've been playing you. That's because you Over were at the, the table. <laughs> 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 it's hard for my cue ball to disappear when you're at the table. And that seems to be the posture I've uh, found myself in most often, Nick. Uh, me in the chair and you at the table. 14 ball. That's why things have to change when we make, make a game. Thank you for being humble, Billy. <laughs> All right. Back, what what is this action. stroke of humility today anyway? Uh, are you working? Or? <laughs> That was a very nicely executed shot, 18. repositioning the one ball so he can shoot a pass to three. And he didn't have much room to shoot a pass to three, so therefore it definitely required a perfectly touched Well, what's he going to do here to break him, Billy? Uh, well, that's your job, Nick. Come on. Um, okay. Uh, is he going to draw into him here? Three ball. That's all I see. And notice he, how he softly drew 20. the cue ball into it, allowing the cue ball to have time to take on the cloth on the surface. Had he hit that with a harder stroke, he wouldn't have hit the rack. All right. And he's facing a tough shot. He got over the six ball, and uh, he's got the 12 on the side. But he's, he's Now, here's an interesting choice here. He's going for... He is over that ball. Well, not all the way. No, I can see. He's not all... No, he's along the side. Yeah, well... I think this is a better shot because that pocket's huge down there at that end. And that's another <coughs> the side's not quite so huge from that angle. Right. That's, a, that's another, uh, uh, you know, he's definitely thinking real good. I thought, though, there's a, is a difference that comes into play, though, if you're going over the top of that six on that shot. Right, for most people. Uh, but for Mike Siegel, he's such an excellent shot maker, and that's one of the things that allows him to sustain long runs because of his ability to put down the tough shot. That's what gives him that little extra edge over the other upper, upper echelon players, you know, and uh, he's able to, to put that Good real table. tough shot down with a higher uh, rate of consistency. Oh, my, miss hit that a little bit, uh, but nevertheless, Almost it did find the pocket. It. Almost overcut it. That was... Ball. Ten ball. Tell you what, these balls haven't been cooperating with him as rack. Uh, <coughs> I don't know if this one is dead or not. It's uh, probably close, it looks like. If it's dead, it'd be beautiful because he could hit the top part of the seven and knock the 11 over for a break ball. Yeah, and then play the seven next. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, exactly. And then he could manufacture a break ball with the 11 right now. But evidently, it doesn't seem to be lying the way he would have wanted it to. 
He's going to have to break Seven off ball. a 12, isn't he? Twenty-five. He's just not quite getting that white ball where he wants it. He just managed and he's just missing a little. So far. He's going to hit the 12 here. Nope. He overcut the two, obviously. I tell you what, he's going to have to kill this Six ball. ball. Uh, maybe even cheat the pocket. This will go in on the full side. No, he hasn't done his he job. He didn't get it full enough. No, that's the second time he's abused his stick in this tournament, and I don't think that's the correct thing to do. Well, <laughs> especially if that's his last shaft he's got with him. <laughs> he's only got one shaft left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> He's going to have to borrow your the shaft, Nick. Mr. Reyes, 54, Mr. Siegel, 52. He's now, almost got to shoot this 12, don't you think, Billy? He can't duck on this 12. I don't. I, well, then, yeah, he's going to have to shoot it. The, the, from behind yeah. the kitchen. Yeah, he's going to have to shoot it from up there. Yeah, exactly. But he does have the ability to put the cue ball anywhere behind the head string. So, therefore, shooting this type of a shot. Uh, I got to shoot here. Yeah, he's he, and he's a great shot maker, as we all know. So therefore, uh, pocketing. Well, he's not even thinking about shooting the shot, Nick. At least from uh, from where he's positioned the cue ball. Yeah, if he passes on this, I'll be flabbergasted. No, he's going to shoot. He's going to shoot. Here we go. Now watch where the cue ball hits the stack here. If he can get over there around that. No, he's not going to shoot, Safety. Nick. He's not going to shoot no, now. No, he's not going to shoot. Well, I, I thought, like you, I thought that definitely he was going to shoot. Maybe he was going to shoot the ball. Safety's allowed. Scored 27. Yeah, he got a ball out on each side. Well, exactly what he tried to do. That's, he, that's what he tried to do. He tried to control both the 12 ball and hit the stack at that particular point where he would get a ball out on the other side of the stack, Safety. making Reyes' job much more difficult. Yeah, well, fm has got to be careful here. Nice speed Safety control, but... Uh, now, he's left him that <coughs> shot you were referring to a little earlier in the telecast. He ain't going to like where he ends up here. No. Oh. He's going to shoot the 14? Said he's playing something, but man, <coughs> I don't like nothing here. Safety. He's going to be between that 5 and 6 when this is over. Safety's Ooh. allowed. I think he could have done roll better. Too good, yeah. Those didn't exactly roll real good. They kind of got out of play on Safety. that side. Uh, uh, he may find himself. He may his next shot may be a foul. Yeah, right. I thought he could have done better from the position that he was in than what what he did. Safety's allowed. Well, no, he's left him. Uh, where he should be able to hit the 14 and draw underneath. I think that's what I'd play here. Safety. Right. Should have gotten him much closer to that bottom cushion. I bet this is better here. Safety's allowed. Okay. Well, now Efren's got a problem because <coughs> there's balls on both sides of the table, and he's going to have a difficult time protecting. Yeah, I don't look for any legal safety here unless it's straight, unless he can hit something full, and I don't see it, Billy. Uh, <coughs> man, there's no place to go. Except uh, I think I'd hit the 11, try to mess him up a little. Hope if I got an angle where I could play safe, but uh, this is an interesting exchange here now. He did the same thing hitting the five that you suggested. Yeah. Hitting the 11. He's got to move the furniture a little bit in hopes that uh, it'll present a much better safety possibility. No. You, di you distracted me. Safety is not allowed. Subtract one from Mr. Reyes. Who distracted? <laughs> Who distracted the referee there, Billy Siegel? Well, that's understandable. <laughs> safety. You made me do that. <laughs> See, he's got to be careful here. You don't want to push him up too high and get him where he can go down to the end of the round back up. Uh, he's got to leave him on. Yeah. Safety is not I'll tell you what, he's got to be careful. If I'm shooting this, uh, you leave him an angle where he can uh, get back up in there, then he'll be the one to jam. Because uh, they're each Safety. on a foul, but Ephraim had 
the first one, he might have let him get away here. No. Safety's not allowed. Two fouls for Strike Ephraim. One from Mr. Reyes, post his second foul. Well, if he can hit this six and freeze him between the six and eleven, that would be you know, a coup de grace. I, I think it's possible, and if it is possible, if I were Siegel, I would I would uh, push through the two ball for a, a little bit so you wouldn't give Reyes that uh, that option. But I think it's possible, maybe not uh, yeah. advisable. And he's left-handed, which Safety. makes this shot play much easier. If it had he been right-handed, you know, he, he couldn't do oh, this. Oh, he, can he can't leave him much anyway. If he don't get him right between them, you know what I mean? <laughs> he did get him right in the middle. And he's on two. He's on two. Maybe this is a time to be pretty intentional here because uh, you really don't want to leave him a shot here. I tell you what, I would take three here. I'm not leaving this guy no shot here. I just, there ain't no way I'm letting him whack one of them two balls in on me. I don't know if Efren uh, is knowledgeable enough about straight tools to make that determination at this point. You know, I mean, uh, I know he realizes that he's on two and he doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to commit the third foul because of the penalty. But the penalty may not be as stiff as if he tries to play the safe. Well, you know, most people have been breaking pretty good. These tables, they've got that back row frozen. Uh, you've got a real, look at that shot Stiegel had to open up with at the start of the game. I mean, yes. uh, uh, you know, that's a hard shot. I'll be like, I mean, I'd like to get it over just another inch, but that's just my nature. But, uh, you, you know, this break shot, uh, you don't get to start off with something too easy on most of these tables. They break pretty good. Those two balls, not Save much me. else comes out. Now, look at this safety here. He's coming back Into in the between rack. the two six. Safety's yeah, allowed. see. He tried to get back into the rack again, like he's mentioned. Two six yeah. where he was stuck. Right. But, uh, I like three fouls there. Right? Yeah, I, li I like three fouls as well. And maybe the next time he's confronted with a similar situation, he also may like three fouls better, particularly if uh, someone brings it to his attention. Well, I think that's just an experience playing straight pool and... Uh, Definitely inexperienced playing Mike Sago, this guy here. The match could be over with that shot and until you've seen it a few times. Right. <laughs> you don't know that it happens. <laughs> you know, but this, you know, a shot like that, that could be the last any time this guy comes to the table. That's why you have to protect. You just can't... Uh, go casually down the street. And uh, giving Mike Sago an inning is, is, is much more than giving him 15 balls. No, oh. that's for sure. So therefore, that should answer the question: Should I take the third intentional scratch, or should I try to play some tough safety and give him the opportunity back at the table with the shot? I think it's, Three. I think it's not even close to being a decision when you're playing Mike Siegel. Well, it'd be different maybe if you're playing on a table where five, six balls come out on the break. But on this, these tables, you've got, I'd say, you're the favorite on breaking where the guy can't make a ball. Mm -hmm. From what I've seen, most people have broke awful good in this tournament. That opening break's been pretty effective. Some tables, uh, they just open up so bad that you can't, you, you got to look for something else sometime. But Definitely a, a very integral factor that you have to consider. But on these tables, I think you're the favorite. Uh oh, uh oh, is right into the side pocket, wow. and that was really unexpected. Wow. Really unexpected. Wow. And post one foul. Well, that went in a hundred miles an hour. Yeah, and in the fashion that it went in, I was really surprised. It's as much as I was that it went in, that he went, went in that direction. You know, because there was no doubt as soon as he struck the ball where the cue ball was going, and it was definitely going to go to the pocket because of the speed. Sort of yeah, like I don't think he got the cue ball where he wanted there. I thought he was trying to just slide off of him, and uh, instead he drew off of him. Uh, I just don't think he quite got, uh, well, that came out of nowhere there. Uh, <clears throat> no, Ray is back at the table with an open table. Now, the last time he was at the table with an open table, he did quite well. He looked like he was really settling in and playing comfortably. So he's certainly dangerous, and uh, as we all know, and he seems like he's fairly comfortable with uh, with the game at this time. So therefore, I look for him to do well with this with this inning. 
Well, he definitely has a good possibility. Uh, well, actually, he's going to manufacture he just the, moved brake the brake ball. The shot up, which is real good. Uh, that's a great brake shot, and that 14 is laying a deal to set up on that one. Six All he's got to do is remove his other six and uh, and stop on that 14 three. if he can. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the three ball, a ball that's definitely a thorn in his side at this time, blocking the pocket from the from the one and maybe even the seven. So he's got to get rid of that ball. He would like Four. to end up uh, so he could shoot the one, so he wouldn't have to. He may have to with play the, the 14 now because he might be too straight on the 10. Yeah, he's, he, he don't have the correct angle on the 10 to drop for the one, so he can so. he can reposition the cue ball off the 14 to give him the right angle off the 10, or maybe even go right to the one. Let's see what he does. He's going right to the one. He's going to probably Five. push the seven over and then shoot the eight. Maybe. One ball. Well, I'll go up for the 10 or seven. Mm, I don't know about that. Six. I think that's okay, but... Uh, Maybe he's going to have to go down for the seven in the side. Or... I don't know. Or he might have enough angle to come across Ten for ball. the seven. I think he can come across plate in the same pocket. No, he's going to go he for the eight. Yeah. Okay, well that's you know it was easy to control the cue ball in the way that he did, so therefore well, actually, that was the shot. Actually, this is ideal because mm -hmm. he can get where he uh, doesn't have to move the cue ball too far from the seven to the breaking position. That looks pretty Eight. good there. And he's got himself a nice angle. Yeah. He'll draw back to the center of the table here, where the cue ball is seven now ball. up about another six to eight inches. Nine. A little more. Fall a little short. A couple of inches short, but uh, no, I think this is fine. It's going to be workable, but not nearly as as uh, as well as if he would have gone up table another two to three inches. Yeah, he probably lost three or four balls. He would have got apart. And I think he had to put a different type of a stroke on this shot, opposed to if uh, the stroke he, he would have used if he would have gone up table another three inches. Now, what I couldn't understand is how that cue ball left the table as quickly as it did when Mike was at the table into that side pocket. We're going to play it back, Nick. Maybe you can describe exactly what happened. Yeah, that would be an interesting one to look at uh, while he's shooting a break shot here. Let's see what happens on this break shot. See, That's right the there problem. is the problem with that shot, and boy, that 11, 8, 12. Uh, 10. Here's the replay, Billy. Okay, we're going to go back to when Siegel was at the table. What cost him? Well, obviously, it's not on our, on our, on our telestrators, on our monitor. Let's take another look at it. I do apologize. All right, here it goes again, Nick. That was a little hard to see. He thought the seven was in the way. I see what happened there. <coughs> yeah, that, that was uh, definitely, it was hard to recognize. That, that, that was a possibility of scratching yeah, on the side That was there. hard to see, that one. That one, he thought the seven had him protected uh, going up table, but it slid by and caught those last two. Yeah, and then he got like a triple kiss off of a high ball that yeah. catapulted Safety. him into the side. Safety Very difficult. coming up. Uh, so, Billy, I guess that two inches did matter this time. <laughs> now, that's just incredible. It, that's nice really touch, incredible. Huh? That thin hit. I, I wouldn't advise... Really, I wouldn't advise uh, very many people to try to execute that type of a shot from the position he was in, would you? Well, you just have to play it on the thin side, you know. That's where you it. take That's that all possibility you where you whiff it once in a while. Yeah, well. You know. But look at the reward, Billy. Yeah, well, he's maybe, got Siegel right back in the same Siegel tough spot. Right. Not only does he have Siegel in a tough spot, he has Siegel opting to take his break right now, which means that, hey, what did he do to me here? I got to think about this. Well, this is critical. Uh, this, hey, we're at the stage of the game now where both players can uh, finish the game their next open inning. Okay, we're going to take a break along with the players. We'll be right back. Okay, Mike uh, opted to take a break because of the position effort left him in. We took a break as well, and we're all back, including Nick. He took a break, too. He's back. He's going to play the nine here, I think, Billy. Boy, it looks like that's dangerous close to a scratch, huh? Well, he can elevate that, so therefore he can has something to say about uh, where the cue ball is going to go. 
Now the one ball is a good inch from the nine, and the seven ball looks like it's going to hit the three, as you can see. Now here's the seven ball here on the telestrator. On the telestrator, we'll, we'll point out, there's the telestrator. Now here's the seven ball, which is going to hit the three, right there, Nick. And the nine, nine water ball. Nine ball. There he's we go. calling it, and uh, here what's big is the scratch. Uh, he's got... Well, once again, uh, you called it right, wow. right on the money. Once again, Nick, what's big is the scratch? I thought since he was elevating, he could control the cue ball well enough to stay away from the scratch. Post his second. Well, you've got to miss that six uh, 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 so much. I mean, he shot that hard, which makes it go more toward that corner pocket. You know, I mean, he really in the nine just barely creeped in too. You know what I mean? I mean, he had to shoot it hard right. to make it. Right. And. Uh, but to be able to recognize that from up here, that that's exactly what may happen, you know, is, uh, is difficult in itself. I didn't think that he would scratch because of his, uh, the ability that he had. In the He'd been another couple inches off the rail. He could have got more draw on it, you know what I mean? Uh, he shot it so hard, most of the draw was off of it, you know. It was mostly like a dead ball by the time it got there. If he could have got a little more draw, but see, he was so close to the rail, he was really elevated. I think it lost all the draw time it got there. Most of it, it was mostly his top shot time it got there. So the last two times he's left the table, he's left the table because he scratched in the pocket. Ray is uh, pretty fortunate to, uh, to be in the position two. that he's in right now at the table. Well, I wish I'd got this many shots myself. 14 ball. But every time he he was complaining Three. that every time that uh, during the break he was complaining, Billy, that every time he breaks the balls and he gets down to seven, eight balls, there's nothing there to break off of. <laughs> That's right. He said, where's the break shot? Five ball. Four. Well, it look, doesn't look like he has much of a break ball. ball at this moment. Maybe the eight, the, the ten ball is a little bit high. Five. Well, the eight's fine. I would be more concerned right now myself whether the break shot is I'd be interested in uh, taking care of the, the two nine and the three thirteens. What I would be most concerned about to break shot can wait till those balls are moved. You know what I mean? If yeah. the three may go, but if it doesn't, or if it's not dead. And it doesn't Eight appear ball. that it's dead, because you can see it's, it's, it's the 313. It uh, looks like it's heading toward Six. the half a diamond area on the foot rail. Ten but he'll probably get it right here. The nine will come down and break up the other two. Exactly. So on one Seven. swing, he got him. And I'd have to think seriously here about using the uh, 13 uh, for a break shot myself. <clears throat> what about you, Billy? Yeah, it, it, especially if he could leave, leave the 15 as a lead ball to the three. I don't think he can do that. I think that the, th the 15 has to go, I think, right now. 15 ball. Not that that route to the three is that unaccessible, which is not, because he can get there uh, by shooting the two or the six as well. Eight. Well, the ones, I think, uh, well... I'd rather be using two six to get to the three, but uh, thirteen ball. Well, he's shooting the thirteen now, so it looks like he's opting to save the possibly the nine, Nick, or maybe even the six. I don't know what he's doing. He's saving the nine. He's uh, he's going to go one two six or six one two ball. and then three, and uh, he's going to break with the nine, which is all right. Makes it a little easier, and there's nothing wrong with that because you, uh, when you make it a little simpler, uh, you have a better chance to get on this break shot. I mean, I like the other break shot a little better because it's a little further from the stack belly, and you can get up high between the two sides where this one, mm -hmm. it's uh, you may have to go three rails with reverse, or, right. or you could come right back into the stack, you know, because it's so close. The closeness of the nine to the stack makes it more difficult for you to go into the stack and then directly to the side cushion and up table. 
you're going to stay below the stack. Now with the angle that he has here, Nick, he's going to have to go forward and, and put right hand English on the cue ball here. Well, this is a dangerous one, Billy, to put reverse on. I'm not sure I would do that. I think I'd go with more high follow and a tip of right and just right. hope I can, uh, you can get away from the stack. Yeah, the, angle, the <coughs> ideal angle would have been parallel with the nine ball. Yeah. And that way you could put the high left hand English hitting the side cushion, then back down toward the, the, the short cushion and around the stack in that fashion. But from the angle he's left himself with here, uh, Nick, mm -mm, I think some bad things can happen to him. Yeah, you can, there is a side pocket over there on the right hand side too. You know, this cue ball is going to have some velocity on it because it's not hitting that much of the stack, and uh, I would shoot this easy myself. See, he's going all the way up the table. I think he's uh, going to be uh, okay because the three went up. But what do you shoot if uh, <laughs> the three ain't there? Uh, uh, you shoot something that you don't want to shoot. Three ball. He's got a great break shot here, though. That 11 should take care of business. I don't know. Uh, I don't expect But it's those. a little thin, yeah. thinner. I might shoot the six here. The six passes. <clears throat> I might go ahead and shoot the six because it's an easy shot. And uh, I think I would uh, try to get above the balls. I don't think I'd go down table on it. But, uh, he may try to play better position on the 11. Off the 15. Well, he's played better position on the 11 15. in terms of pocketing it, but, but he's going to have to stretch over the table, and he's going to take a little bit away from the stroke ball. here. Yeah, you're right, Billy. He's stretching. and uh, Well, one thing nice, he hits us. A 7 may go over and break out those two balls at 10, 12, come off the 6, or might go straight off the 13 over there, but I He's got a chance to take care of those two and not even uh, have to worry about them right here on this break. But I, I like pulling that cue ball up here, Billy. I, I like trying to get it back up. I like staying up. He is not down. But I think he's going down table here. Worked out okay. Yeah, it did work out okay. But there, if you notice, it, it was like uh, you know a matter of an inch or an inch here, inch here, and it wouldn't have worked out okay. Right. right. So therefore, it was a, a higher risk shooting it in that fashion, but it did work out okay. I think I'd draw right into the five here, pretty full, and try to stick there for the 14. You can go forward, but I. Well, he's got to watch out here. He's got the 12, and that's about all he has. Yeah, I like playing position for a ball. <laughs> yeah. But uh, in this game as much as possible, not uh, rely on pot luck. But if you notice the position of the seven here, Nick, perfectly nice positioned game. for the break ball in the four in the ten ball here. Nice lead up ball for it. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to save this as your third ball, your next to the last ball, and this is your break ball. <coughs> Yeah, I would have tried a little harder to play position on the two. I like what you're calling there, Billy. That's my, one of my favorite setups is that ball because you stop where the ten's at. And, uh, mm -hmm. and man, who don't like that break shot? <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, uh, the two balls available right now, I'm surprised he doesn't shoot the two. Well, he's a little close to the rail. I can't say I might shoot that ball myself. But when I shot the other one, I think I would have tried to get on the two instead of uh, floating up off the rail. I think I tried to stick it more and got the two next. Uh, the six, now the six balls are uh, a ball that he must move. The five ball he must move. 21. And that four ball, I don't like ball. leaving that ball no. to remove soon. Yes. And look where he's 22. put the six here. See, mm -hmm. he's put the six. And this would spot. even have to make you think a little bit about, uh, yeah, I think I would draw into the Five six ball. here and stick and knock it to the rail. Then the four is not so bad, see? Yeah, now you, now see, you now the four is a good ball to say. <laughs> exactly. Save. He turned it into an asset there. As long as you're going to move the six, you might as well move it in the spot where you like it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that was, uh, that was a nice touch there. That was... Uh, That'll make this last four ball pattern pretty nice, Billy, because uh, he felt good on the two. He just float up. He'll have that nice angle to go toward the rail. Yeah. And uh, basically sticker bounce off a little on the uh, six. And uh, yeah. this is a good break shot. 
25. And uh, four ball. And we've been so uh, involved in, into this particular match, I don't think he's gotten straight enough 26. on this to comfortably control the cue ball. I mean, I'm, he can't end up with a break shot. Oh, easy. But, it's, but uh, I Six believe ball. he went a little closer to the cushion. He's okay. He won't get off the rail over a couple inches. See what's wrong. I mean, I mean that's nothing right. wrong with that. That angle's right perfect, perfect because you don't get froze up on the rail. <laughs> Billy, you're off the rail. No wonder I always miss those balls I miss because I'm on the rail. Let's catch a score here. He's on a run of 27. Mr. Siegel, 54. 89 to 54. Raises 35 balls in front here. This is a race to 150. Needs, he needs uh, 61 balls, I believe. i tell you what, Billy, uh, this is a great break shot here, too. This is, uh, he should get a nice yield here uh, with a nice uh, follow stroke. Uh, he, should, uh, he should get most of these balls apart. It's a little bit of low, but he should get uh, eight, nine balls loose here with a good follow stroke. Let's see, he might get them all. And he, uh, he got That's most a nice of the moves. yield, huh? He's That's a nice yield. He just got one little cluster of three there, and even those might go. And he does have the benefit of uh, also having a nice little break ball in the nine ball there. Look at it's positioned right. nicely in the right hand side of the rack. So therefore, you know, I mean, he doesn't really have to do much manufacturing in this particular rack in terms of coming up with a break shot. Let's see what I like here. I like coming up. Uh, well, you can play the, you might play the 15, but I like getting on that 11 and going ahead and splitting those three balls there, hitting the six, eight, ten, soon. 30. Now he's falling a little short of the mark, and he's going to have to shoot over the 15, and if he does that, there's a possibility that the cue ball may have to go into the nine, and then he'll lose his market on the break ball with the nine. Yeah. So therefore, you know, he's uh, created a little bit of a problem for himself. Let's see yeah, what he does. I like coming around two rails off that ball he just played ball. and uh, playing the 11 as the next ball. This, there, bye-bye to the Very nine well. ball. Yeah, now he's got to do something else and, uh, and try to figure out what he needs to do to uh, create another break ball for himself. And if he's straight in on the 15, he may have to go up table on top of it and not even stay down table where the trouble's at. You know, sometimes you do... One ball. Take for granted certain situations and you do something that's foolish or, you know, uh, causes you a big careless. problem careless later is on. a better word, I would think. He got a little careless by not getting the cue ball up the table a little further and he found himself on top of the 15 and that could cost him quite a bit. It's because he got well, a little he's careless. lucky he's still got four balls that uh, could possibly end up being break balls. At least he's got traffic if... <laughs> If, where you're in trouble when you move something like that belly, big trouble is when there's nothing around this rack. Right, when you do it late in the rack, Ooh. And you really you, you lose your, your market. So he's still got a chance to recover. And that's what a big part of this game is. is uh, unfortunately, you can't stop the cue ball and off 14 shots. Four ball. So therefore, the game had this particular particular match has been really interesting. It's been a close a close match the entire way. Both cool. players have really unexpectedly left the table because of some unforeseen error. Siegel 34. twice now. But frankly, I feel that of the two players that have that are out there playing, I think that Reyes seems to be the more comfortable of the two. Look at the six ball. Nice uh, positioning of the six there. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And look at that eight, ten, nine up there. Wow. If he can just get the five taken care of, this is really a nice way to finish up here. Uh, 15 ball. I like this uh, way these last few are laying. Yeah, he can go 10, 5, 3. 36. Nine, eight, or he can go a lot of ways here, but that's one way. Yeah, now the eight ball is a good ball because of the position of the nine. That would Only be my because last of the ball. Of the nine. You know, well, if the also nine, it's a good ball because of the position of the break ball. shot. To, boy, I wouldn't take this one out. I just wouldn't take this out. Well, 
I guess if you leave the 10 there, it's fine. Yeah. Now the 10 position, nice. He, he can, he can go, you know, no nine, way. five, three, ten. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, nine, five, three, ten. That's good enough. He can go uh, not five to the three and draw the cue ball to the side cushion for the 10. Right back out again. Play the 10 on the side. And then I just double the corner. Right. He'll be going in uh, in, in toward the 10 at the right angle. If he, if he comes out of the corner, he two cushions. One yeah. cushion, two yeah. cushion. He's on the perfect angle, and it looks like uh, he, he's going to... He's going to end up with a, an ideal break shot with a good angle. Yeah, he's going to charge Mike for that shot he went at that he scratched on. He's going to pay a price here. I have an idea Siegel's coming back to the table, but uh, he don't have to. But uh, he's going to have some pressure on him when he comes back this time. If he does have an opportunity to come back, 103 to 54 in favor of Reyes. Reyes at the table, and he has a nice shot with the six to open up the balls. 103. Okay, we missed the, the break shot. All, all that Reyes did, though, is he, is he rolled the six in and he opened up a couple of balls on the other side of the rack. <clears throat> so we really haven't missed much. That ball skidded a little bit. He really didn't get the follow off a bit that he anticipated. He's on yeah. a run of 43, Nick. Yeah, he's playing 11 in upper corner pocket. And 11 ball. It's critical where he falls on this next ball. Well, he's opening up the pocket for the eight for the break ball. 44. Yeah, he's going to have to draw back up off the seven. He's got a pretty good angle to draw back up for the eight. You have to be a little careful. You uh, get an angle on it. But from this angle, he might even have to go forward. He's got quite a bit of angle, but I still think he can uh, stiff it right up there, Billy. Yeah, he's got an angle on the seven that he can go either or. He can go back by drawing it or forward two cushions. Let's see what he decides to do. He's going for the break on the two. Or, I don't know if he tried that. Or the eight. Uh, he was I, trying to get the eight, wasn't he? I don't know what he was trying to do. I was surprised to see him do what he did. Uh, and now after he did it, I, was, I still don't know what he was trying to do. Well, the two don't go from here, so he obviously wasn't playing for that. So uh, he just pointed his cue where he went a little further than he planned on. I wouldn't be surprised to see him shoot the eight up in the upper right-hand corner with some speed here, Nick. That's about all you can do here. What else are you going to do? I mean, not, there not is the, nothing else. Not the type of a shot that I would like to shoot. Or for that matter, not too many people would. But uh, I don't know what else he has. He's Eight going four. for the side. You're right. He must have some two, two ball combination. And 13 too. He fell on a good line for that. Well, if he if he fell on a real good line, then the 13 should just float softly down about an inch or so. He may have the 13 for a break ball. Two ball. I don't know. I don't think he can leave the 13 there, but he does have the four there. No, he couldn't leave the 14 there. And now the 13 has come back up and frozen itself against the cue ball. And uh, certainly has has hurt his possibilities of, of pocketing the four and loosening up some balls because of the position of the 13 in the cue ball. So therefore, he really has a lot of work to do on this particular shot. He's got one asset going for him here. He's got this. Uh, the, if, the, if he can make the 13 cutting it like that, why doesn't he need to shoot through it with a little English? Is that a foul? Yeah, I think it is in this tournament. I think they've got that chalk rule where uh, if it goes forward at a half a ball, it's a foul. He can break the stack. Four cushions here. One, two, that's three, four. That's in the corner four. pocket there. No, a little short. I well, thought that's, that's what he tried to do by shooting with a low inside ball. He tried to get that. He tried to get that bend off that bottom cushion to yeah. let them the shot out around the yeah. table. You think he's going to spin four the four ball. in here? Yeah. Well, if or he cut uh, it in, yeah, if he has the ability to do it, he'll probably do it. And uh, he did it, and Ooh. he used a little English to uh, spin it in, but uh, he Mike's wasn't able to come up with too, the shot. Uh, 
Mike's on a foul, too. Isn't now, he? yeah, if, if Reyes remembers that Mike's on a foul, this would be a good it would place be to his use advantage. A, this would be a great place to use it, Billy. But how often do you forget that your opponent is on a foul, particularly if you're really not that experienced in playing He's straight banking ball? banking the one. Boy, this is a tough shot. Oh, I, I think I'd let Mike shoot this one. And he got a real bad kiss off the three. Look at where he's ended up, Nick. I mean, he had enough courage to shoot the bag. You would think he, he would made deserve a, great a better shot. reward. I mean, that's a hard bank. That's a wide, that wide angle. He made a great bank shot. But now he's got to come with the 14. You would have thought he deserved a better reward. But, of course, he did. But... Uh, the pool guards didn't seem to think so. Sir. He's uh, 14 ball. He's he's going to play the 14. Crucial shot. 13 ball. Oh. He hit the center of the pocket, Nick. Yes, he did. That was a great shot, Billy. The last two been great shots. I tell you what, I'd spin up here and try to move at 12. And that's exactly what he may do. And with, with his uncanny ability to control the cue ball, you know, when he's amongst the balls, I'm certainly sure. He, no, he's not going to. He's going to move to 10 here, Nick. But I don't know uh, how much of a benefit he can get in moving the 10. That's only good for the side pocket. You know, I don't but think he can move it any place. Maybe he's far. just too thin on the 15 to, to move to 12, unless he hits the side of the 12. I try to hit it right where the numbers are at and stick for those two balls on the side. Yeah, but I've maybe the speed ball. of the shot doesn't lay right. I think I don't think the speeds. Well, he was too thin on it. The, the, yeah. the angle, yeah, the angle wasn't any good there. You know, he could move it with a draw stroke here. He could draw it off the ten and then move the twelve as well. Yeah, but do you have trouble getting a shot that way? Yeah. I think he's going to have to go with the ten on the side. What would you play here? Well, you would have to play one of those one of those two balls in the side for your break ball. Mm. It looks like he's going to have to play the three in the side and go two cushions behind the rack, maybe. Yeah, now because he didn't get up high enough on the three. No, he's opting to maybe to to try. Well, I don't think he has the angle to draw for the for the side with the for the ten from the angle that he's left himself on the three. I kind of I think it's kind of flat to do that. I think he's going to have to shoot the 10 and then shoot the 3 in the side, going two cushions underneath the rack. And that's what he's done. He's going to have to go. And it isn't really a bad break shot because he's going to be able to hit it with some velocity. He's going to have some speed coming off that bottom cushion. And he should be able to knock out five or six balls there, Nick. Well, the worst thing that's going to happen here is not going to get a shot. Yeah, it may go to the side <laughs> cushion and back into the rack again to, after after breaking loose the ball. So therefore, he has to he has to be aware of that because a oh, lot I, of players. I think he's a favorite on getting a shot here, Billy. To get a shot? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think he'll get a shot. He has 117 balls and he only needs 33 more balls. That's two two racks plus uh, another. Five two more balls. break shots. He needs two more break shots to run out this game. He's going to have to hit the eight and the six here. He has to hit deeply down there. One, two. He hit the 13, and uh, that's that's why I said he might go back yeah. to the rack. Yeah. If he would have hit the eight or the uh, near, near more toward the end of the stack, he, he would have been able to go up table a little bit. But he went well, back to okay, the rack. okay, because I know this ball goes in the sides. So. But take a look at the monitor. And the best part is where the four is at. Uh, <laughs> If we look at the monitor the way our viewers can see it uh, from, from the TV, it may not, uh, he may not have enough room to pocket that 10. He may not be and able the to side. hit it. He may not be able to hit it. The one may preclude him from being able to hit the, uh, ball. Uh, shooting the five. 12 ball. Oh, oh, 12 ball. I think 12 he's playing in, He might be playing it in a corner. Okay, then he definitely has room. And maybe it doesn't go past the five in the, in the side, but it certainly goes in the corner. And that's exactly where it went. Now, here's okay. the hard shot, Billy. And not hard for him. He's close enough to the five ball, and he's going to shoot the five to play position for the four ball five so ball. he can sustain his run and possibly keep Mikey in the chair. Yeah, I mean, he's going to hit this a little hard to get off the rail. I think a job well done. 58. 
Yeah, I tell you what, they should open up good here. He should get them all apart or almost all of them right here. Mm. He does have the 11. He's going to have to shoot over the 1 or else he's going to have to shoot the 14 on the side. The 11 is a much better shot. He's so much closer to the ball. And I think he can hit the left side of it here without going all the way over the 1, too. And he's got the 2. But he does have a lot of congestion around that foot spot. I do believe, though, that the 15 ball passes... Well, here's the 15 ball here, Nick. I do believe if he's over here somewhere, the 15 ball passes. Yeah, it does. 61. So he can attain that angle off of the 14, or if, if he has the correct angle, maybe he'll go into the balls here. I don't think he does, though. I don't like going into balls here. I like uh, 15 better, Billy. Uh, 14 but ball. he may not have that option anymore. Right, he may not have the angle to gain a shot on the 15 <coughs> to do what he needs to do, so therefore he may... Uh, you know, go into the balls here, and it's not really advisable, so sometimes bad things can happen here. I tell you what, uh, he was probably, uh, that was probably good just hitting the 10. Anything else he hit, it might not turn turned out so rosy. Uh, I think uh, just hitting the 10 there was a big key, Billy. Now let's take a look at, the, in relation to the rack, if there are any possible break balls, Nick. The, is the one far enough out? I think the only ball that could he, right now I think he just has a couple options and he's getting uh, the 13 and the 8 uh, and the 13's gone, but uh, he'll probably have the 1 after this. He'll but he's a little thin on this 15. Uh, he may have to even uh, shoot the 10 first. Uh, uh, I think I'd take another shot of position. Maybe Absolutely. Here. I would shoot the 10 repositioning the cue ball so where I would, have, where I would hit the, the 9 ball more thickly which would move the six and move the one both. Unless I don't know if he can dive pretty quick. Oh, he didn't even hit him. He was pretty full on that ball, right. wasn't he? Then he should have shot the 10 to uh But I tell you what, this is a... Uh, Unless he sees something out there that we don't see. Oh, he's trying to get the six out of there, but now he's going to hit the one. 66. I don't particularly care for the way he went around these balls there. I, I kind of liked your shot, Nick, by shooting the 10, repositioning the cue ball so where you could, you know, shoot, I think it was the 15 going into the 9, loosening up the 1. Now now he doesn't have any break ball other than the 8 in the side, and you know that's a high-risk break ball. Well, you know what you're going to go for here is uh, you're going to draw back, play the 1, and uh, you're going to play the 9 in the corner, play the 1 in the side, stop the cue ball in the rack, and take ball in the hand on the 8. <clears throat> and that's about the only choices he's got left now. It's there. a high risk break shot because if you come from behind the rack, you run the risk of sticking, sticking behind the rack. Uh, you know, it's not really. Uh, no, I'd go into the front of the stack. 68. I don't know if he can do that from from the angle. That he's going to position the cue ball. Oh. It may be laying a little too thin for him to do that. No, I think he can. He's going to have to draw it. But. Okay, he's done exactly what you described you would do and uh, what was available. And now we'll find out uh, how he uh, attacks this particular brick shot. But, but meantime, this is where I got that scratch. I got it one rail cross corner in that upper left corner pocket that match. I never got that particular scratch before. I've got it in the sides, and I've missed the head ball and got well, it in the corners. If you will, with the telestrator, maybe you can show us exactly what happened and how you did scratch. Is it okay now? Go ahead. Yeah, it was a pretty similar shot. I was uh, up in here by where he's got the cue ball now, and uh, I cut this eight inside and drew to the front of the stack and then I got this scratch right here once across corner and uh, well I think I saw Lassiter uh, scratch like that back in I think it was 71 1971 so let's <laughs> see how he plays it maybe he is going underneath of it yeah he went underneath and he went underneath and he does have a shot to four ball in the side or the corner 70. I guess uh, if you feel confident enough, you shoot the four in the corner. Four ball. No, yeah, I'd play this on the side. 71. Just no use taking that risk for no reason. Now keep in mind, he needs to get through this rack, and then he has to come up with a break shot, and then if he comes up with a break shot, he'll only need five more balls in the next rack to shut Siegel out. Seven ball. Tell you what, uh, 
Seventy-two. That uh, that combination where he scratched in the corner, Seven Billy, four, is liable to cost ball. him severely. Because I'm not sure he's getting back to the table here. Ephraim looked pretty comfortable, and uh, yeah, if those would have tied up, it might have changed the name of the game. <laughs> A <little bit. laughs> not to say that he wouldn't have been able to handle it or deal with it in some way, but it would have made his route to the next rack a lot more difficult. Yeah, it would have definitely uh, put some hard work into this rack because the way he's got them laying now, they're pretty good. He's got lots of things out there loose. You know, if, if he could shoot the six here, Nick, if he could shoot the six and then draw, hit the 10 and knock the five over here for a break ball, that would be great. I don't think he could have done that maybe, huh? But, it's, but now, you know, I think he could do that. He's going to push everything down here. He I don't like pushing. Five. I don't like pushing the balls down, and, and no. uh, I like I like uh, trying to push something to the side some way. Well, but one thing nice. Uh, I know I'm always uh, at this stage of the match. What I'm thinking about, even the three, I'd be happy with that because uh, about any break shot where I got a chance to run out because needing five balls, I I like to shoot something that last rack. I definitely am not going to miss. He could shoot the three now and then knock the six over. That's a possibility, but uh, of course he can't hardly really keep it high enough. I don't think he's kind of he'd almost have to cut underneath of it to keep it. Uh, if he could ever position the cue ball over here. Yeah, the six. Then shoot the 11 seven after seven. actually eliminating the 12. He can knock the six over. Well, the two is easy to do that. I'll be amazed if he don't bounce off off the two, push the six over and then play the 10 and the 12 and. Uh, which, Three and what's wrong with, what's wrong with playing the, wow. the 12 10 come up here for the for the 11 knock the six over play the play the uh, 14 in the side and then go uh, play uh, play the three ball and have you have the six there for for the break ball because I think the two I don't think he could miss off the two that position to push it over uh, the 10 he's got to go a little further you know what I mean he's got to bounce now off the rail and find that angle he may find it but I like the idea the two all he had to do basically was bounce off Billy it was almost foolproof but this uh, he could get too far he and, may uh, have gotten too far. Let's take another look. He's going to have to whack it a little. And I'm not that crazy about saving the three as the last one anyway. So he's going to end up with the three, Billy. He's going to end up with the three. It's not a bad break ball because he's ideally positioned the cue ball tonight to drop softly in this area here for a great break shot. Look at that. Go right on your line, Billy. How'd you draw that one? <laughs> <laughs> and keep in mind, he only needs five more balls, and uh, he's uh, he'll run like 90 and out. He's on a run of 82. He'll run 87 and out. 87 That's not too shabby. No, that's pretty good playing. That's great playing. Well, I really have to question uh, making that combination scratching on it. I just, uh, man, that's hard. Yeah, you called it. You know, you you called it right before he shot it. You said the only problem here is that scratch is, uh, you know, that scratch is awfully big. Well, it looks like he's not going to get back to the table, Nick. No, no, he's going to play the 7, the 12, and uh, probably be able to go up table from there. And uh, he needs four balls. And uh, I think this one you can mark down in the history book. Yeah, he's going to play shape probably for the 12, 4 Tell or Tell you what, he got straight 11. in on this ball. He may have to draw back for 14, oh, Billy. Can he? No, he's coming out. Uh, he frees against that 2. I tell you what, if that four don't go, it doesn't go, Nick. It doesn't uh, go. So there is a little is, suspense left. Single has match. a little life right here. He did. That he's going to have to do if something 11 that he didn't want to do. Well, the eleven goes. What's he need? Two. Yeah, I think he needs. Uh, well, I know where I'd play this balls. one. I'd play the last two that I made would be the eleven and the fourteen, and this ball would be going in easy. Yeah, that'll certainly. You know, widen the pocket. Now, once again, Nick. The uh, 10, I think. I think a 10 will slide by the 14. <laughs> but, but if it don't, pocket. yeah, if you overcut this a little or clip that 14, Siegel could get life here. No. Nope. 
Well, that was a nice run out, Billy. Uh, uh, that was a nice run out. It certainly was. And, uh, you know, Siegel, uh, I think that uh, the six or seven years he's, he's taken off, I think it's shown a little bit in, in this match. You know, I mean, he fell short a couple times of the marker position on crucial shots to lead him to a break pause and lead him to a ball to break open a cluster here and there. And uh, he scratched a couple times that I thought that he didn't have to. But all in all, I thought he played well. He played extremely well against you. Yeah, he really, he played perfect on me. And uh, But just look like today, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, he... Like you say, he didn't play bad and he didn't play great, but right. he played good. And uh, but it just, I think, six years off the tour, I think, just showed up a little bit in that match. Yeah, well, you have to understand, and I'm sure you do, that you know, if you take that long off, six or seven years, it's it's really difficult to come back and compete against the upper echelon player. It really is. And what he did against you, I don't know if he can do that fairly regularly, but. Uh, he, 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 got, he got out on you in two innings. All right. There's Mike LeBron. Uh, I guess he's coming back here to, to thank me for persuading Reyes to play on the table one. Is that what you want to do, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike's all smiles after that match. Uh, uh, Mike LeBron, uh, uh, he's small smiles from ear to ear. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he run like almost 90 and out there, so uh, I I'm certainly sure that helps his confidence a lot, you know, because before this match, I think he played uh, Kia, or whatever his name was from the Orient, and uh, I don't know if how many balls he ran in that match, but he ran almost 90 out here. I'd hate to be his next opponent, I tell you that. <laughs> uh, uh, Mike, you think Reyes wants to come up and say a couple things? Yeah. Uh, we're going to get Efren up here now. We're going to be right back. Uh, and when Efren gets here, <laughs> when Efren gets here, we'll be we'll be right back. Okay, we're back with Efren Reyes. Reyes, uh, before the match started, do you? You know, the issue was, what table do you want to play on? You want to play on table one, so we could do the commentary, Nick and I, or do you want to play on table four? So uh, I, I don't understand all this. Why, why didn't you want to play well, on table my, one? My schedule, uh, they put me on the on the table four. You know. Yeah. I thought I'm playing in the table four, uh, and then uh, I. <laughs> you don't have your. All I don't have uh, my logo stuff, uh, to logo. play over uh, in the table four. Okay, but going into this match, I watched you playing your match yesterday, and uh, you I didn't seem like you were playing as nearly as well yesterday as you performed today. Did you? Didn't you feel well yesterday? Or well, mm. you know, Mike Siegel, you know, I thought I, I I'm lost of the game because I know Mike Siegel is the best street pool player, but you know I, I win only for a uh, scratch. He, he scratched four times, you know. Yeah, but but uh, despite that, forget about that. You played well today, you know. You played very well, well today. Well, because 90 I Ninety balls out, you know. Because I play good. Because uh, when he's scratching, he give me like a ball in hand. You got lucky they again. Give, <laughs> they give me a, a, I don't know, confidence uh, to make me. And of course, uh, when I play the top, uh, the top uh, ball, you know, and then I make it. Well, I mean, Nick and I watched the match, you know, intently. We were doing the, con the commentary on the match. We thought that you really played well today. You know, you, ran, you got around the balls well. You played well. You made a lot of good shots. You looked a lot, lot more comfortable out there than Mike Siegel. And then we thought that it should have been the other way. We thought Mike should have looked more comfortable than you because Mike's supposed to be the, the great straight pool player. But in the meantime, uh, you're looking pretty good now. How do you feel going into your next match? Uh, my next match, I don't know if I play good or the same like that. If I play the same like that, I might win again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, from congratulations. Uh, that was a nice uh, long run uh, to uh, run out against Mike Siegel because it's always hard to beat him. And uh, well, I don't think I'm going to make again more than 80 points. Maybe next time more than 30. <laughs> but uh, I'd like to ask you another question, you know, which sort of kind of surprised me a little bit. Not totally, but it did. I noticed that the first time you went to the table, you had a three ball 
and you decided the bank could cross side and break open the balls? I mean, what was going through your mind? You, did you really like that shot a lot? Oh, no, I'm not really. What I'm going to do? I have no shot. That's why they give me a shot like a bank and then for the break, I have to shoot. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's a good uh, shot. The, two, those two, the shots that stick out in my mind from that match are that bank shot cross side. That was a beautiful shot, and the balls broke out nice. And then the other shot that was surprising to me is uh, the shot Mike decided to play. It looked like it was hard to make that combination without scratching in the corner yeah. pocket. I was surprised he played that because uh, you end up running out behind that shot. Yeah. Uh, he played that I don't think he's gonna make it, you know, but the only he can make is gonna cut the two balls, but uh, you know, when he cut the two balls, he must scratch again. So. I bet you felt pretty good when you saw that cue ball yeah, going to that pocket. Every time scratch, he he <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I know you have a lot of respect for Mike Siegel, and you really like one another, but whenever you compete against one another, there's a lot of, you know, killer for both of you guys to beat the other guy. I know that, because there's no other player in the country that you would rather beat than Mike Siegel. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I see. Shut up, what you know. I know Mike Siegel gets the best. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, thanks a lot for stopping up and visiting with, uh, with us, Efren, and... Uh, you played really great, and good luck to you in your next match, no matter who you play. Thanks. Nice match, Efren. Good luck in your next matches. On behalf of Efren and our guest, Nick Varner, this is Bill Incardona saying thanks a lot for supporting Acustats. Give Pat a call, 1-800-828-0397.